Hi, seventh graders. This is a quick video about creating effective uh, thesis slash claim sentences. Uh, and then the mnemonic, the device for remembering that we're going to use is TASS, T-A-S-S. -S. That stands for third person, arguable, specific, and supportable. All right, so the basics. Analytical paragraphs, whether it's in the context of a multi-paragraph essay or whether you're just writing like a paragraph to answer a question, should always begin with a clear thesis or claim. Um, we'll get into later on the, the sort of difference between a thesis and a claim, but for now you just need to know, do not start with an introduction, okay? You don't need to say, oh, this story was interesting, this and that. You might have heard stories before about basketball, blah, blah, blah. None of that, okay? Just start out answering whatever question or prompt it is that you're supposed to respond to with a clear claim thesis sentence that should be third person, arguable, specific, and supportable. Third person, not first person, not saying, I think that this, not second person saying, you should know that blah, blah, blah. Third person. All right, I'll get into the next ones on the next slide. All right, so here's a little bit about effective thesis slash claim sentences. These are descriptions and examples, and then you have, uh, don't do this. All right, so third person. This is something that for our work this week, use this and fill in the blanks. Author characterizes person as adjective and adjective through their actions and effect on others. All right. So don't start with, I think that, you know, Samantha is artistic. In my opinion, Samantha is artistic, or I will explain to you how Samantha is creative, right? None of these. Okay. So to you, where it sounds like a speech, we do not do that in analytical writing, especially not in that first sentence. Just just start out with, with the point that you're trying to make. You don't have to say, I think that. You are the author, so I know that you think that. Um, next part, arguable. For this week, so it, arguable means like basically somebody should be able to argue with you or disagree with you. Um, that's why I this is what you stay away from. This character is an interesting person. This is a person who has personality. What is that? There's no, there's nothing to argue there. That's just kind of like, okay, that's true. That's not, um, that's not something that you can have differing opinions on. So it needs to be something that somebody could agree or disagree with you. Another non-example would be if you say, Samantha is the protagonist of Secret Samantha. All right, that's not arguable. That's objective fact. So for this week, what you want to argue is by choosing two to three adjectives, just two is even fine, to describe your character that would require supporting evidence. So if we're going back, like in theory, go back to that list uh, that we saw earlier, um, like you would, uh, here we go, this list. Right. So if we were describing, uh, say, Henry, we'd be like, well, what is he? Is he quiet? Well, I don't think so. But you would pick two or three adjectives from this list or other ones that you just want to pick. And that's what you're going to argue so that somebody could say, hmm, is he really that way? I don't know. All right. So third person and arguable. We're clear on that. Next, specific and supportable. Supportable means like uh Next level, like A++ supportable claim sentence is going to be when you give your reasons right in the sentence. So you are making it clear to your reader exactly what you are going to do for the rest of the paragraph. I'll show you an example next. But don't just make something up that can't be supported. Uh, specific. Include the text, title, author, and topic all in your sentence. Include everything. Right? So don't say in the story blah, blah, blah. Or this character is interesting. This character is nice. This character is different. What does that even mean? Anybody can be described as, as different because we're all different from each other. Okay. So then I'm going to, I'm going to show you. So here is an example using the story, how to transform, right? With a really long title, because none of you are writing paragraphs on this, but we're relatively familiar with the story. So 
in the short story, How to Transform by Matt de la Peña, the narrator's father can be described as reliable and reserved based on his actions and the effect he has on his son. All right, so for you today, writing a paragraph, you could just change these out. In the short story, Secret Samantha by Tim Federley. In the short story, Sometimes a Dream Needs a Push by Walter Dean Myers. And then instead of the narrator's father, you plug in the name of your own character. We don't have this person's name, right? There's like no names in that story. It's kind of a unique thing. Um, but so you would say, in Sometimes a Dream Needs a Push by Walter Dean Myers, Chris can be described as blank and blank based on, and then go through that list of steel, right? Speech, thoughts, effect, actions and looks, choose like two of those. And then you're gonna put that in that sentence. So then what is this tell me as a reader? If I were to keep writing this paragraph, I'm gonna to expect to find one piece of evidence um, about the father's actions and another piece of evidence on the effect he has on his son. So again, your basics, analytical paragraph should begin without an introduction, just Hit us with a clear claim that should be third person, arguable, specific, and supportable.